So, Sartori, I want you to read John 11. Start from verse 1. Let's have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Go on. Okay. <laughs> Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that said he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumble it not, because he sees the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumble it, because there's no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Okay, that's it, stop there. I just want everybody to know, we all know this. First of all, I want to acknowledge everybody. If I miss your name, because it's because you have HP, I can't read it. Pastor Bere, Sister Cindy, uh, Chiwendo, my little uh, niece, Byron, Blessing, Annie, Adeline, D, Mutakego, Damot, and uh, all of you here who are some on uh, on HP. I suppose one will be Kevin. I suppose some of them. And if I don't call your name, Terry Gladys, Prabenga, Sister Wola, Joseph, and uh, Pastor Joseph, my other little sibling. I wanna welcome all of you, Annie and uh, Dee, welcome all of you to this uh, fellowship tonight. And I do want you, if you really, if this fellowship has been a blessing to you, I encourage you to share the link. And we have the um, the Zoom, I mean, not the Zoom, we have the YouTube channel. You go to, you put my name, Charles Tequa, YouTube, Greater Works Ministries. You can even clip latest videos, you're gonna see them. Subscribe, click on subscribe and click on alert so that when we post every new thing, you will get it automatically, you get an alert. That's the way to grow. And then we need to grow our subscription. It's free. We have 11.2, 11,000, 11 11.2,000. And that's where we'll be stuck for a long time. We need to move on to 13 and, and all that. So share it with your friends. There are people who are not in church now. You can share it. And there are people who are in a dead church. You can share, and there are people who are in a, in a lively church. You can share it. Share, share the link. Share the blessings of God. Bring your, your, your spouses and all this. Because we, we grow together and we learn together. Yeah, tonight I want to revisit something. If I have already said it way back, I'm not sure. But it's one of my areas of uh, visitation or areas that I like to look at because it's so relevant to our lives. It's time. The word is time. T-I-M-E. There are 16 references to time and timing in the Bible. It's very important to know that in, in important areas of our lives that God's timing, somebody asked D.L. Moody, how? What is the most important thing when it comes to the will of God? D.L. Moody said there are three important things when it comes to God's will. He said number one is timing. Number two is timing. And number three is timing. So timing is very important. You can have the right idea at the wrong timing. It will be disastrous. 
You could have the right message, the right prophetic anointing, the right, but, but, but if you don't in, make the right timing and bring it at the right timing, then it becomes disastrous. Timing, timing, and timing. You know why? Because God is not in a hurry, but we are in a hurry. That's the problem. Delays can be very stressful. We can do the right thing at the wrong timing. And delays are, are very, very important, and they can be very stressful in our lives. Because we are ready to go, and God is not. So I want you to know this. When you operate in God's timing, guess what? It lowers your stress level. Your stress level is reduced when we operate in God's timing. Sister Terry, read Ecclesiastes 3.1. Quickly. Ecclesiastes 3.1. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Amen. There is a time, a season and a time. So for everything in your life, God has a timetable for everything. There's a timetable. For centuries, the prophets were prophesying the coming of the Lord Jesus. They talked about him come. They talked about it's going to come this. It's going to be this. It's going to be the land of the tribe of Judah. Every prophet and prophecies pointed to Jesus. And everybody wished that Jesus would come at their own time. But he didn't come until the fullness of time. So it's very important that when we operate in God's timing, our stress level would be minimal. Why? Because God is timeless. He's in control. Look at the story we read. Here, Jesus was on a trip. And the family of Lazarus sent an emergency. SOS, Lord Jesus, please come. You don't come, there will be trouble. Lazarus will be dead. Please, stop everything you're doing. Hurry up and just come. What did Jesus do? My goodness. The Bible said he delayed his trip two more days. Just can you imagine what happened to the faith of this family? They sent a messenger to Jesus. The person you love so much is dying. Please. And Jesus took his time. Ah, I, I, I was just trying to picture this. When the messengers got back, I can imagine the disappointment. What happened? Why didn't he come with you? Well, I told him the urgency, but rather than following me and suspending everything, he extended his stay. Two more days. Jesus, what kind of love is this? What kind of care? And the Bible said he loves the, this family. When the messenger must have been confused. When he relayed the message, he must have been confused. When they got the message, he must have been confused. Because if he didn't come to interrupt or intercept or try to prevent Lazarus who die. I could imagine when the messenger was coming back, they looked, they didn't see Jesus. They were disappointed. And by the way, the messenger must have told them, well, I talked to him. He, he extended his stay two more days. What a disappointment would have been to this family. Folks, I do want you to know that everything that God is dealing, us, dealing with us about is on his timing. And many a time, we don't have the patience to wait. Because look, God is in control of time. In fact, the next thing we need to understand in this area of timing is that God will not give you the details you need in advance. I just want you to know that. God will not give you the details in advance. He doesn't do that. 
often. Because see, if God does that, you and I, we don't have the capacity to absorb everything. We will be overwhelmed. And people are trying to find out their, you know, the, the purposes and plan of their lives and, and they are going to palm readers. And I remember one time I was at Walmart. A woman was coming toward me. She was smiling. Sure enough, I was also smiling. I was also smiling. And she came close. I, I, I mean, somebody smiled at you at Walmart, my favorite store. I mean, I can understand that Publix. Publix is expensive. So if you smile at me at Publix, I probably will not smile back because I'm thinking about my pocket. <laughs> when they say Publix shopping is a pleasure, I told the cashier it's not so much of a pleasure when I'm paying this big box. But Walmart is a good store. You know, everybody is jolly and, you know, we are all having a good time. She was smiling, and I was smiling too. But when she got to me, we stopped. She said to me, um, has anybody talked to you about your future? I said, yeah. I said, yeah. She said, really? I said, yeah. She said, who? I said, well, my future said that Jesus Christ loves me, and Jesus Christ is coming tomorrow. If he comes, I'm going to go with him. He's coming back again. She said, no, 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 are you a religious preacher? She kept running. I kept chasing her. I said, you ask for it. <laughs> you are, come on and sit down and listen to what I'm telling you about my future. People are going and doing all kinds of things to know that. Today, I got a call from uh, overseas. And that's, that's amazing, remarkable, because I woke up this morning. I was about to pray. I started laughing from nowhere. Just laughing uncontrollably. I didn't know what I was laughing about, but it was funny. Even my laughter was funny to me. That it made me, it made it even funny. I kept laughing more when I, I thought about my laughter. It made me laugh more. There was no visible uh, nothing, and it hasn't been happening to me like this for 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 a long time. I started laughing uncontrollably. I was just having a joy of my life with nothing in particular. So I got up to go to a meeting. I got an international call, and the lady on the other line said, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing OK. She said, yeah, I haven't spoken to you in a long time. I said, OK, how are you? How is the ministry and everything? She said, I saw you joyous. You were so joyful and laughing, and this, <laughs> from that's an international call. I just saw you so happy. You were so joyous. Can you share with me? I said, I don't know either why I'm joyous, but I know that Jesus is Lord. And I know that uh, he provides all my needs according to his riches in glory. That's enough. But I said, look, I have no particular reason this morning other than the joy of the Lord is my strength. So what am I telling you? I'm telling you that God will not give you the details because we don't understand his timetable. And sometimes not knowing the details would make us, we get frustrated. We wouldn't want to trust him. We, we want to know everything that he wants to do. Sister Terry, read Ecclesiastes 3.11. Ecclesiastes 3.11. <clears throat> he had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he had set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God make it from the beginning to the end. Amen. He makes everything good in his own what? Time. Time. It's important. That's why we have the friction. That's why we have the conflict. He has made everything beautiful in his own. He's in charge. He's in control of time. You cannot try to manipulate him to come sooner. So understand that God, number one, God's timing would make life easier and better for us. Number two, God does not give us advance warning. I mean, advance details. Okay. He can give you an insight here by little by little. So you just trust him and go to the next level. He doesn't. He's made everything beautiful in his own time. We gotta learn to trust him. The number three thing in this area is God is seldom early, never too late, 
always on time. Let me repeat it again. God is seldom early, never too late, is always on, on time. Hmm. You see, we have to learn that. Because if we don't learn that, some of us will be crawling all around, trying to do things and uh, at the wrong timing. It's never too late. In the case of Lazarus, in the eyes of the family, God was, Jesus was late. Mm -hmm. In the eyes of the family, they were disappointed. We're going to see the end. You know the end of the story. You know where I'm going. At that <laughs> moment, it seems like it's what? It's late. It's late. Since I tell you, read 2 Peter 3, verse 8. 2 Peter 3, 8. 2 Peter 3, 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. See that? That's why it's not in a hurry. <laughs> one day with the Lord is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. You see, listen, I've traveled by the grace of God, and I hope you come along with us. God puts a vision in your life. I've seen it so many times here overseas, everywhere. God puts a vision in your life. Life will go on. People give up on their dreams because it doesn't happen too fast. It doesn't happen because we want it yesterday. And they abandon their vision. They abandon their dream. They float. You ask them for a plan. They say, I don't have any plans. Why? God didn't make any nobodies. Everyone on this line, when God made you, he put a purpose in your life. He gave you a plan. And that's why so many are living out of the will of God today. We are in a hurry. We have the microwave mentality. If God doesn't do it, if it doesn't happen too fast, then we give up. We give up on our dreams. We give up on the visions God has given us. Your dream may be different from God's dream. Your dream may, may stink because it's, you haven't had God's own dream. You're pursuing your dream. But when you pursue God's dream for your life, that's what I'm talking about. That one doesn't stink. And everyone has God's purpose and dream for their lives. Just some of us are not willing to find it out. Why? Because we are in a hurry. Life puts us in a very precarious situation. We worry. We do all kinds of things. We abandon the vision. Oh, yo, I wanted to have my own law practice, just an example. When I was, when I'm 30 years old, and then you've tried and tried, you're now 31, and uh, you're 21, 29, it seems to so distant. You're now 31, nothing is happening. Have you really waited on God? and put that vision before him and ask him to fulfill it and wait. See, we have waiting rooms all over. We have waiting rooms. We have waiting rooms for the doctors. We go to the doctor's office. We wait. As, as a matter of fact, half of our lives, we wait. We wait for the doctor. We wait for the airplane. We wait for school teachers. We wait for Uber. We, 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 wait, we, we are waiting most of the time. We go to Walmart, we're on the line, we are waiting. And only very few times have I seen somebody try to crash the uh, cashier ahead of everybody. Most of the time, even at Walmart, uh, uh, the festive periods at Walmart, the lines are too long. And that's, they have the uh, safe checkout and they're still not doing the whole job. And some people are closing the sex checkout because consumers are complaining. But what do we do? When the line is too long, what do we do at Walmart? We wait. One time have I seen a man and a wife, I don't know if it was the wife, a man and a woman, they spent like three hours. I estimated three hours because I saw their basket. It was loaded. And they came to the line, the line was long, they abandoned it and walked away. What are they going to do? They're going to go to another store and try to 
invest time again. It may not be a store like Walmart. It may be a place they need to pay a little bit more so they can get out quicker. And that's what's happening to some of us. What is that dream God has given you? When you were growing up, somebody asked you, what do you want to be, a police officer? You think you just made it up just, just because you saw a police officer? God gives us those dreams growing up. You vision yourself, envision yourself be doing this. And you begin to imitate it when you play. Parents buy you those things you say you want to be. The vision God has given you needs to be rekindled tonight. Because it hasn't happened too fast, that's why we have abandoned it. Sister Terry, I want you to read Habakkuk 2 verse 3. Habakkuk 2 3. There. Almost there, Dr. Chekwa. It's okay. Page 192. Page 192 <laughs> in my Bible. <laughs> for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though yes. it tarry, yes. wait for it. Because uh -huh. it will surely come. It will Hallelujah. not tarry. Hallelujah. Please read it slowly again. I want everybody to, if you have wax in your ear, remove it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, anoint every ear. I want you to hear this. Read it slowly. Read it slowly. Okay. And the, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Amen. The vision is for appointed time. That's timing. That vision that God has given you, you're waiting. It hasn't come. You, you're waiting too fast. It hasn't come, and then you start looking at elsewhere. You abandon that vision. God said, it's for appointed time. It shall not tarry. I mean, it shall tarry, but it will surely come to pass. That means delays. Delays, delays. God's timing comes with delays, delays. You know, in the justice system, they say justice delayed is justice denied. But in the word of God, justice delayed is not justice denied. Because when God has a delay, God is trying to do things in our lives. Why? God is trying to teach us how to walk by faith. He's trying to teach us how to walk by faith, how to trust him. And also God is building character in us. He has. Listen, character is the only thing you're taking to heaven with you. You're not going to take money with you. You're not going to take your Jaguar with you if you have one. Whatever car you're driving, you're not going to take it. The thing you're going to take with you to heaven is your character. And that because living here, Jesus is teaching us the discipline on how to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. Timing. Very important. Because it's delayed doesn't mean it's denied. It says, tarry. The vision may tarry. But it's for an appointed time. So when something doesn't happen too fast, you don't have to give up. If God's dream and timing is perfect, his dream, his timing for you and I is very perfect. Your timing and my timing are not perfect. So we might as well stay on God's timing. This is a very good word for everybody here, including this preacher. You see, look, the other thing we need to observe is this. God's timing is not always comfortable. We not we are not always comfortable. You know, I hear I hear people say, well, yeah, because I have peace about it, 100% I have peace, then that means it's comfortable. You have to poke your spirit. 
90% of the time is true. The other 10%, you have to really work dependent and listen. Actually, I think 100% of the time, you got to actually uh, listen to your spirit. Listen to the spirit of God working in you. Why? Because there's time when you may not have peace to what God has called you to. It doesn't mean that the outcome will be disastrous. You may not have any peace, but the only visible evidence you have is the word of God confirming it for you and the Holy Spirit confirming it. Even though you don't have, I'll give you an example. John the Baptist was a man full of, he was baptized in the Holy Ghost in the womb. So he knew the Spirit of God well. He walked with Jesus. He identified, this is Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He knew he was in the middle of the will of God. He was chastising and preaching the gospel. And one time, he sent a messenger to Jesus. Go and ask him, is he the one to come? Or should I wait on another? Why? He's been in suffered for a long time. He's been in agony. And everybody was trying to kill him for a long time. But guess what? He didn't have peace about not knowing Jesus, whom he had already confirmed. But he stuck to his calling. His innermost being stuck to that calling. He ended up give, giving his life to that. He didn't pull out. If he said, I don't have peace about this Jesus, this may not be the right Jesus. That's exactly what he was saying. There may be another one. So I'm just going to get out of this calling so that I can have peace. So it's very, very important what I'm talking to you about. Because you are going through something when you are believing God and you are in God's room, God's waiting room, like a woman goes for delivery, doesn't mean that it's not the will of God. Because everything, everything has to come together immediately. No, you have to wait. You have to wait. Look at Mary. Look at Mary. Just look at her life. And look at that God's timing and God's calling and God's will. Hey, young lady, for lack of a better word, without being disrespectful, to be able to kind of bring it home to everybody here. You're going to have a baby. And... You don't know any man. That was God's will, God's purpose, and God's timing. And that timing was not comfortable for Mary. Because what happened after that? Joseph was going to kick her out, divorce her, call the relationship up. And here was this young lady going to the mom. Mom, I'm expecting, but the baby is God, but I haven't slept with any man. Yeah, right. And by the way, I'm going to have a baby in a stable with Joseph where the midwife will not be there because there was confusion where Caesar said there will be census. Chaos. Can we imagine census? People living. Let's say we have census in the U.S., let's say next year, and they say, everybody, go back to your country of origin. <laughs> those of us who are not even born here, everybody starts going back, even those who are born in the U.S., Start going back to your state of chaos. That was what Mary experienced. That was what she was experiencing. Had a delivery that was very traumatic in the natural. Why? Was she in God's timing and God's will? Of course. Because you're in God's timing doesn't mean that there will always be perfect peace all the time. God <coughs> wants to teach us to depend on him. He wants to teach us to rely on him and he wants to develop your character he wants to develop my character it's very important since i tell you read the uh, luke 2 1 through 6 luke 2 1 through 6 And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. 
and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in okay. the inn. Okay. You see that? Do you think it was the most comfortable thing for Mary to have that baby under that, that circumstance? And that was chaos. And then she went to um, had the baby. There was no room in the inn. Mother was not there. Auntie was not there. Doctors were not there. Midwife was not there. It was just uh, Mary and Joseph and delivered that baby. And by the way, when that baby was delivered, they were also told to flee to Egypt. You think mm -hmm. it was comfortable, convenient? No, no. So when we are in God's waiting room, we need to know that God wants to do something bigger and better in your lives. He wants to. You, you saw how he ended with Lazarus. God wants to do bigger and better in our lives. We need to, in the waiting room of God, just like we waited for the doctor and everything, we need to wait for God's timing. Because you can step out at the wrong timing, it will be chaos. But when you do it at the right time, you see, God, God is timeless. Because the right time, God can do anything Immediately, Sister Terry, read uh, Isaiah 60, 22. You said 60? Yes, yeah, 60 verse 22. Okay. A little, one shall, mm -hmm. a little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Mm -hmm. I, the Lord, will do what? Will hasten it. In other words, that's why it's a thousand years. It's like one day and one day. Is like, it's, when God does it, that's the reason why he doesn't worry. When God can do anything suddenly, <laughs> he can do all those things suddenly. Remember, he says, I hasten my word to do what? To perform to it. Perform it. Hasten. He can do it. So that's why he's, he's in control of time. That's why he's not hurrying. Mm -hmm. Because when he's about to do it, all those times combined together instantly, God can do more instantly than, than you and I can do by trying to get out of God's timing. It is difficult mm -hmm. for us to be in God's waiting room because we are ready and God is not. That's why. You are ready to get married now and maybe God is not. You're ready to start a business now. Maybe God is not. You're ready to do what you want to do. Maybe God is not. And therefore, there's a conflict. Then there are delays. I've told you that delays will do two things for us. Number one, delays will test our faith. Your faith is tested. God gave Abraham a promise he was 75 years old. That promise did not come until almost 100 years. That's 25 years in between. Delays, 25 years in between. And when it happened, it became a bigger miracle. If Abraham had had a baby at 75, maybe, you know, people would say, yeah, his uh, organs are still. But almost 100 years and the wife, 90 something, close to 100. Having a baby at that age was more glorious to the glory of God yeah. than having a baby younger the miracle was even bigger. So God will do bigger or better things. It will test your faith. It will build your character while you are waiting. When you are walking, God is working on you. While you are looking, while you are trying to have God to do something, while we are busy trying, God is busy working on you and working on me. Sometimes God is waiting on us. He wants us to grow in certain areas and we are not ready. 
and God is doing that so that when he does it, everything comes together. And because we are not ready to do it, we seem to go do other stuff and cause confusion. Delay is not denial. Justice de de denied is in the world. God's delay is a lesson he puts us in the school where we learn. Isaiah 49 verse 8, Sister Terry. Isaiah 49 8. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, mm -hmm. and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, mm -hmm. and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. Okay. Ac acceptable time. Here it goes again. Acceptable mm -hmm. time. The time that God is prepared. You see? What delays do to us, we begin to complain. We become so negative. We, we start complaining. We get frustrated. You know, we, instead of staying in the waiting room of God, allowing God to build you and I to what God wants us to do. The delay, the delays are designed purposely by God. Those are not accidents. It's by divine providence that God designs those delays. When you're in the waiting room of God, when you're in the doctor's waiting room, we, we usually wait. We, usually, we don't complain much. We can sigh, and, but we don't leave the doctor's office. We don't. Because we need that doctor's report. We need that doctor's medication advice, whatever. We need to find out what's wrong. But when it comes to God's waiting room, we leave. Just think about it. If God's waiting room, we leave. If you have a, a pregnant woman going into the wedding room or labor room now, she doesn't, unless the hospital is bad, she doesn't leave. She stays there. She stays there in the labor room until she delivers. But we are so impatient that we walk away from God's wedding room. And then we do everything we're doing is out of timing. That delay is by design. You're working on things, but God is working on you, is working on me to conform us, to bring us to the tendency. There may be people that are connected with the prayer God is going to answer, and those people are not ready yet. God is training you and I so that your faith is beginning to develop more and more, and those God is working on those. When he answers us, everybody comes together, and things will begin to flow. Why? Why is it important? Because a thousand years is like one day. All those waiting, all those time in God's waiting room, one day, one minute, God will do it suddenly. And that will take care of all the years and times we have waited. A lot of people are out of God's timing for their life. And that is why you have a lot of frustration among believers. A lot of frustration. Now, I just want to give you some key things we need to do. Why we are waiting on God or we are God's living waiting room or, or level room or whatever you call it doesn't matter god is waiting on you why we are thinking we are waiting on god the first thing we need to do is when we are in situations like that why we are waiting for god the first thing that god says we should not do is to do what is to walk by faith is to walk by faith he started to read mark 536 is to walk by faith. While he yet speak, Mark 5? Yes, 36. Okay. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the rule of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Amen. Be not afraid, only believe. That's fear. Remember last time we said, in the Bible, there are 365 words of fear not in the Bible, one for each day. God is saying, be not afraid. Don't fret, but just only believe. Trust him. Trust him with your faith. Put more trust in him. When you begin to walk by faith, you're going to walk in less fear. 
No need to stress. No need to listen. I I memorize uh Psalms 31 verse 15. But Terry, read it. Read it. I memorized this long time ago, but I want Terry to read it. Psalms 30, 31, 14 through 15. Fourteen through fifteen. Yeah. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Okay. You see that? David, if you go to other passages of the scripture, you will see David saying, Deliver me speedily, speedily, speedily. They are grown up now. See mm -hmm. what, what does he say? He says, My times are in your hand. Mm -hmm. My times are in your hand. My times are in your hand. When you walk by faith and trust him, the Bible says we should not stress ourselves. We should not be afraid. And when we are not afraid and we walk not by fear, fear not, verse 15 says God's time, uh, your timing and God's timing your your is your time are in God's hand. If you do that and relax and take the counsel from the word of God, fear not. Fear not every day. Guess what? God is gonna work it out for you. And sister Terry 69, Psalm 69 13. I just had that when I was reading. 69 13, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time. O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. Amen. You see that? So what do we do? When we pray our prayer, don't set the time on your prayer and let God work it out. Let God work it out. You pray your prayer and do what we are supposed to do. Allow God to work it out. Don't set, don't put God in a box. There may be occasions where the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you pray for things, you command things, those things come, they are totally dependent on the Holy Spirit of God in terms of the action when you do the prayer. But when you pray and wanting to know the will of God in every area of your life, please, Allow God to work the timing on your prayer. Don't be the one that will set the timing. Let God set it because he does a better job than you and I can ever do. Fear not. How many times would God tell you not to be afraid? How many times? Does, has fear solved any problem? I don't know of where fear has solved any problem. We see it in the Bible. We see it in our lives. It doesn't solve any problem. You might as well... Relax and trust him. So we should walk by faith and not be afraid. The next thing we need to do is to be patient. When you prayed, Psalm, I believe it's uh, Psalm 40 verse 1, I waited patiently on the Lord and he inclined his ears unto my cry. Patience. Patience. The reason why we don't have patience is because we are all over the place. We're impatient. All our nerves are, are wrecked. And we are so anxious. We just wanted God to do it. Yeah. And then what happened? We get into trouble. Patient, impatient brings uh, anxiety. It brings uh, uh, fear. It brings mm -hmm. everything. Calamity. Philippians 4, 6 tells us that. We don't have to read it. We all know. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer and supplication. Prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known unto mm -hmm. God. And the peace of God. Oh, mm -hmm. how many people are trying to get this peace? Thank God you and I have that peace, and we can continue to walk in it. In perfect peace, Isaiah 26, 3, will he keep him in whose mind he stayed on day. him? There is no need. Listen, brethren, one of these days, we're going to finish our course. And we go. Some of us, we don't want to follow the word of God, may, may go prematurely. How do I know? 
Ecclesiastes 7.17 says, why should you die before your time? People really do die prematurely. Mm. The Bible talks about it when it talks about communion. It says many of us sleep because we take communion the way we shouldn't be taken. We don't want to be that. Why don't you take the advice of the one who knows of the manufacturer's handbook? Impatient. When we are, Sister Terry, um, Psalms 30, 30, 37, verses 7 and 8. Psalm 37, verses 7 Rest and 8. in the Lord. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for them, for him. Mm -hmm. Fret not thyself because of him who prospered in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Mm -hmm. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Mm -hmm. You see that? You see that? Trust in the Lord. Fret not thyself. You know, we, we are guilty of comparison. That's part of the thing. Oh, oh look at uh, sister, sister do good. She has a new job, and I don't. Look at how she's doing well, and I'm not. Look at how her kids are doing well, all my kids are. We begin to compare. Even mm -hmm. those who do evil, to be able to be where they are. The Bible says we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't compare ourselves. Comparing, comparison is very is terrible. Mm -hmm. Do not compare yourself to anybody. And worry has not changed anything. Has, other than worsening our lives and sending some of us to take uh, pills for anxiety and all panic disorder. Get me, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying everybody uh, that is on medication is on that because yeah, they don't know any better. No. So what I'm telling you is worry cannot do anything. It can't change a dime. So you might as well take the advice from God which is do not be impatient. Don't be anxious. Don't worry about anything, but trust him with prayer and supplication. Thanksgiving. God is going to bring things to pass. Your worry mm -hmm. cannot make, move the hand of God one inch. You see that from all the prophecies from the Old Testament about Jesus coming and they felt, some felt it will come sooner. He didn't come one minute earlier. Or one minute later, he came at exactly the appointed time. So, defeat uh, that in our lives, impatience and not waiting on God is fear not, walk by faith. The next one is don't be patient, actually. Be patient and wait on him. Psalm 40 verse 1 says, I waited patiently and inclined unto my Prayers. The next thing I want to give you before we pray is studying the Word of God. It is very important. Studying the Word of God is important. Memorize it, write it down, speak it, meditate on it. Sister Terry, read Psalm 1. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Okay. Praise the Lord. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the way of sinners, mm -hmm. nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Mm -hmm. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, mm -hmm. and in his law do he meditate day and night. Okay, stop there. Now, everybody, listen again. I want her to read, read those verses again before we go to verse 3. Read it again, Terry. Everybody listen. Listen to the instructions. What we should do. Listen again. Read it. Sorry. Did you close it already? I did. I'm sorry. Um, so, I'm getting it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the way of sinners. Mm -hmm. nor sit it in the seat of the scornful. Mm -hmm. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in his law do he meditate day and night. Okay, go on. And he shall be like a tree planted mm -hmm. by the rivers of water mm -hmm. that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Mm -hmm. His leaf also shall not wither. 
And whatsoever he do, it shall prosper. Okay, that's it. You see, I, I challenge everybody to read this verse, this chapter one of uh, Psalms. It couldn't be more clear. The man that walketh not in the council, not standing in him, his delight, his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law does he delight. So in other words, the word of God, the manufacturer's handbook. I'm telling you, the manufacturer's handbook will really guide your life, will empower your life, will bless your family. He said, when you do it, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers. That everything you do will prosper. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. Blessed. The Bible says, take the scriptures, read it, walk in it, memorize it, speak it, speak it, walk in it. And those blessings will come. So we don't have to worry about God, you know, the timing, the God's timetable for my life. And you're reading the word now, and God is giving you the wisdom, and you're marching forward. And uh, do not give up, because a lot of people have given up on God's dreams in their lives. They have. Maybe somebody spoke to you and told you you were inadequate. That's it. And told you something. And that's it. You abandoned God's vision and dream for your life, for your family, or they said something about your children and all of that. It shouldn't be. It should not be. Sister Terry, read Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. I was waiting for that one. Okay. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Amen. You shall make your way prosperous and have good success. Why? It goes back to the book of the law, the Bible, mm -hmm. the New and the Old Testament. Don't let people tell you Old Testament. No, Old Testament was revelation of Jesus. <laughs> I don't know how, how anybody can be that dumb and be a pastor and tell people, oh, it's Old. Old Testament was re Jesus revealed in every book of the Bible, in the Old Testament. Hmm. I don't know why people are saying stupid stuff about Old Testament. If, if you take Isaiah alone, just Isaiah, and see, see 53, you see where he was wounded for our transgressions, and you see Isaiah where Jesus was beaten up, that his face was like a pancake. Mm -hmm. You see Isaiah 54, 17, he talks about no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He looks at Isaiah 41, 10, he said, fear thou not. You look, I mean, you just, just the book of Isaiah alone. So the old and the new, spend time. Reading is the most important thing you can do for man or God or your family. So spend time and study the word and pray. My goodness, how has the enemy taken us too far away from the weapons that God has given us to thrive and be able to overcome all this, this foolishness that the world is throwing at us everywhere? How did we stray so far away from that? The first yeah. time I went to Israel with my wife, I told you I saw, saw the tomb and saw. We got into that airplane. I took my Bible and started reading it from Genesis to almost try to finish it before we landed in the U.S. I didn't finish it exactly, but I almost. The hunger, the hunger. And then you read Psalm 119. It talks about when you study and read the word of God, God makes you wiser than your enemies and makes you wiser than your own pastors. For lack of a better word, use the word teachers. Because of the knowledge we are gaining. We need to, it's very important. Go to bed early. Wake up early. Study the word. Pray. You get up there to take on the word. The Spirit of the Lord is all over you every day. That's it. I don't know how we would abandon or lessen the most important thing we need to have victorious life. The most important equipment we have to thrive on our jobs, to be able to stand the wickedness of people around us, to be able to get promotion on our job. To be able to have financial success, physical, everything. It's in the word of God. It's a manufacturer's handbook. It's a manufacturer's handbook. You drive a car and it says check engine. Check engine light comes. You will put a scanner to find out the pro that's what the word. Since I tell you, read James 125. We're gonna close. James 125. 
James 125. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his oh deeds. Goodness. Oh my goodness. God, I don't know if you are getting this. <laughs> when we read the word of God, perfect law of liberty, mm -hmm. and do it, he said we shall not, we shall be blessed, not cursed, blessed beyond measure. This is the word of God. It's not, I didn't write it. Sister, tell you, read it one more time. If you haven't closed it, then we're going to pray. One more time. Mm -hmm. Everybody listen. One more time. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty mm -hmm. and continueth therein, mm -hmm. he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. In his deeds, in everything. It says, whosoever read the law of liberty and continue it in it. Not just read it today and then abandon, continue it. You remember what the Bible says in uh, John about the truth shall set you free. People don't quote it right. They say, and the truth shall, you shall know the truth and the truth shall say. That's not the, the end. It says, if you continue in my word, then if you continue in my word, then you shall know the truth. It doesn't just say you shall know the truth. No, if you mm -hmm. continue in my word. That's it. That's the caveat there. Continuance. That's what James says. You continue, you read it, and you do. You will be blessed. How many people want to be blessed here? Amen. I am too stressed Amen. to be blessed, or I am too blessed to be stressed. One. I take that second one. I am too blessed to be stressed. I am too blessed to be stressed. Sister Terry, finally, Galatians 6, 9. Galatians 6, verse 9. I am too blessed to be stressed. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. All right. This particular verse is for everybody here who has given up on something that God is working in your life. What is he saying? Don't give up. Do not. You give up, the devil has won. You and I know 7,000 promises that God has given. Who is this? Who are these promises for? It's for you and I. Claim them. Claim them. Walk with them. Live in them. Listen, I want to share this testimony to God's glory. I didn't plan on doing that. I, about two or three weeks ago, I was who are looking for money to be able to get tickets. Try tickets are. Uh, Getting a little bit expensive. I had some of the money where I didn't have all. I needed $2,000 more. $2,000. This was like a week or 10 days ago or something. I prayed with a sister on this slide. She prayed. She said, Lord, I, I commanded this. According to your word, we claim it, we decree it, we call it done. I, listen, I'm a human being. <laughs> I may be a pastor. I'm a human being just like you. I got, I have issues just like you. But I have made my commitment that the word of God would govern everything in my life. And I'm praying for more consistency in that area. And we prayed. The sister said, it's done, brother. It's done. It's done. I said, okay. Thank you, Jesus. I went about my business. About uh, two hours Somebody asked me to send them information on how to donate money to the ministry. I did. I forgot about it. Three more days went by. I, I just trusted God. And the flights were about going up. I was telling God, reminding him I needed to get this flight before he gets way, way, way out of hand. I went to my email. I was just checking email. I saw a notice from PayPal. You have $2,000 in your PayPal account. You have 2000 What do you think I did? I praised God as much as I could, but I ran before the guide changed his mind. I went there and, <laughs> and transferred the money to the account and then was able to get the ticket. Why? We trusted God. That's, we need to live a life like that. We don't have all the needs met. I'm still tr trusting God. I don't want this to say, oh, 
Pastor Chekwa, you have all this. No, no, we still have four, 400 widows that we need to provide food for. We still have other things we need to do. We need to buy the food. We need to transport it. We need to get transportation from that. It's a lot of expenses. But you know what? I'm trusting him. I am trusting him. We're going to learn how to live like that. And you want to be the instrument that God is using as well. Because the only way I can give you 2,000 is if. If I have 2,000 to give, I'll give it. If I don't have 2,000, maybe I have 100. Give whatever you can. No gift is too high. If you give 100, if that's all you can do, that's as equally precious in the sight of God as 2,000. I want to give you the impression that because somebody gave 2,000, you gave less. doesn't mean yours is any less. It's not. No, the Bible says do according to you. If I don't have 2,000, I'm not able to give 2,000. For me to be able to give it, that means God says he's given the sower seed. If you're a sower, you can't say I don't have anything. Because God says I give to the sower seed. Believe God. Because if you want to give us 5,000, it means that God will bless you with more than 5,000. That's the way it goes. A teenager asked me, Pastor Chad, why is it God telling me to give $5? I say, because God wants to give you 25. Really? I say, yeah, that's why. Well, somebody shout hallelujah. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you tonight. Do not be weary in well doing. If you have abandoned that gift, if you have abandoned that thing that God has called you to do, please pick it up. Trust God. Wait on Him. Ask Him to reveal Himself to you more. It, you are you are you are very important to God. I'm telling you because there's no way this mission or ministries or people can hear the word of God. I mean, all over the world without you on this line. You are very important. You matter to God. You count. To, you are as precious as any evangelist. Any Don't let anybody take it away from you. Because if you're the only one that is in this world, Jesus could have just come just for you. That's how important you are. Don't let anybody take it away from you. Because of what they see, the things you've gone through, and people are talking about you. The only There's only one opinion that counts. And that's the opinion of Jesus Christ. And he says, I loved you with an everlasting life. And I want to give you a better future. I want to do bigger and better things in your life. But you're going to learn how to be patient, how to walk by faith, how to trust him, how to study the word and do exactly what you're reading. God is going to come true. That thing you're trusting God for, he's going to do it. He's waiting to walk in you and walk every other thing that needs to be in place so you can be blessed. I want everybody to pray right now. Pray and thank him and, and uh, thank him. Talk to him about the vision that you have for your life. But some of you may have a, a vision of one day I'm going to go to Africa and preach the gospel with, with, with me. Or I want to go to India. That may be what God is putting in you. Whatever it is, I want you to go and reclaim that vision right now. Reclaim it in the name of Jesus. 